Hey everybody, welcome back to Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff. Today we are going to solve another storage issue. I have not too many guitars, but I do take up about a quarter of my back room with them all on individual stands. So today we're going to make a, a rack that runs along one wall. It's about four feet long, give or take that I can mount them all this way in to uh, compress the storage of my not too many guitars. <laughs> Let's go in, I will show you the current situation with the guitars and then we'll go through what I got rolling around in my noggin for a design and uh, we'll pull some wood down and get to work. All right, guitar rack day. <laughs> That's fun. Let's go. All right, so here's the current situation with the guitars. Uh, I'm not going to show you this whole room because it's a mess, but uh, they are taking up about a quarter of this back room of my house in this corner, all on individual racks. And there's about nine of them. And so uh, the idea is to put them along that wall back there um, in one rack all lined up nice and orderly um yeah this is i mean it, it looks awesome <laughs> but it's not an efficient use of space and sometimes you got to go for efficiency over appearances especially since i'm basically one of the only people who ever goes in this room <laughs> so let's get back out to the shop and we'll uh we'll look at what i what i got going on for design ideas Okay, so hopefully you guys can see this okay. Uh, essentially what we've got, I got these two pre-laminated pine shelf things that you get from the home centers. I'm sure you're all familiar with them. Uh, so I've got two of those that a friend of mine was cleaning out her place a while back and they've been sitting up on the shelf forever. And I'm going to use those for the sides of the... Uh, guitar stand thing so we'll just put those like that i think they are 36 by 12. so what we're going to do is we're going to cut uh some kind of curviness out of them i don't know exactly what yet and so the back the top will be a little bit back of the middle of the sides And we will have a piece running this way for the neck of the guitars to lean against. And then we'll have two bottom pieces that will run for the base of the guitar. So the guitar will sit in there like that and lean up against this piece here. And uh, yeah, that's basically what we're looking at. So from the top view, we'll have two sides and then we'll have pieces running through for the guitars to sit on like that and a piece about like that kind of a deal for the necks to rest against and the guitars will sit in here this way and maybe we'll put some dowels or something in the top piece to separate them uh, not quite sure and maybe I don't know what I'm gonna do with the joinery between the side pieces and the bars I might do I might do through mortises and peg them or wedge them or something I, I haven't quite gotten that far yet but that's uh, a terrible depiction of what it is that we're gonna be getting into here so let's get some wood down and we'll uh, see what we can figure out so, as with all projects, we have to start by taking down some wood off the shelves. These are those uh, pine shelving laminate things that I was talking about. And then I found a really nice uh, eight-quarter piece of Douglas fir that was uh, essentially rift song. So, it would give me nice, clear, straight grain on all the sides of the cross pieces, which I liked. And we got to start designing our sides. I... Uh, started drawing some curves and seeing what I liked and ended up coming up with this sort of crisscrossy vine looking 
kind of thing that I didn't hate. So I went with that and uh, headed over to the bandsaw to start cutting it out. And uh, once we get the one cut out, then we can draw that one. Well, we got to refine the shape, obviously, a little bit and smooth things out. Get the inside pieces by drilling out a couple of access holes for the jigsaw to go in. And then I can jigsaw out those center pieces and get to uh, refining the shape a little bit so that I can transfer it onto the second piece because they are essentially mirror images of each other. Uh, like I said at the beginning, I wanted two spots for rails to come across the bottom for the guitars to sit on and then one just sort of back of center on the top for the next to rest against. So we're still uh, cleaning up these little inside corners here with the chisel and then we can get transferring onto the second one and do the same thing with that. And essentially we've got our two sides. They still need some final sanding and some round over and I added a few more embellishments and things to them eventually but we'll get to that. And then we can start cutting down the, uh, the rail pieces. Uh, I made it as long as this board would give me until the big knot in it. <laughs> so I don't, I wanted it to be about four feet long and I think it came out at about 42 inches or so. Um, so it was close enough. I wanted to cut the big knot out of it so that it would be nice and clear and clean. And then we get to milling that. We can joint one edge so it'll ride nice along table saw fence and we'll start ripping pieces out of it. Uh, I went with about an inch and three quarter square pieces, so I started by cutting them inch and three quarter that way, and then I could flip them on their side and cut them an inch and three quarter that way. One table saw setting for all of it. And then we can get all the ends cut to the same length and start adding. At this point, I'm thinking I'm going to go wedged through tenons. So I make a nice big long tenon on each end. Here I am cutting the shoulders on the sled. So I have nice crisp even shoulders all the way around on all the pieces. And then I took it over to the bandsaw to cut the cheeks of the tenons. Is that what they're called? Cheeks? I don't know. The, yeah. Cut this part of the tenon. <laughs> and uh, I ended up not really being pleased with how that came out. I had a little, little drift in the blade that I didn't... I started to clean them up and even them out and I just, it was frustrating me so I just lopped them off <laughs> and started again and decided instead of losing that much more length off them, I would just uh, do a, a through tenon, just exposed a little bit instead of wedging it. And initially I'd planned on making a knockdown thing so that I could flat pack it if I ever had to move or whatever. but. It's just too big a hassle to get those all cleaned up and I didn't want to lose the length. So then we're measuring the the width, the depth, I guess, that we want the tenon. Just a little bit more than the uh, the width of the thing, the side piece. And then I realized as I was about to start cutting them that I actually wanted to measure off the other side of the, <laughs> the piece. So I had to adjust it real quick before I started cutting them. But then, just with a, a dado stack in there, I can start the, hogging away the, the tenons and I have nice, even, even tenons. And then I sort of just eyeballed the angle and where I wanted them on the, uh, on the side pieces and I masked them off with some, some tape and cut a nice crisp line with a marking knife uh, just in case I so that I wouldn't get any blowout or minimal blowout later when I started hogging it away. I drilled a, a nice small hole in each corner uh, all the way through so that I had the corners marked and then I could get the rest of the majority of the material out with a Forstner bit and then get to chiseling. Um, I, after I did the bottom two, I figured out a much better way of doing this. Uh, well, I didn't figure it out. I knew there was a better way of doing this. I just kind of felt like doing some hand tool work for a little bit on these bottom ones. Um, and then I got over that in a hurry because it's a painful, tedious process at times. 
but once we got them uh, fit, nice and snug, uh, we could transfer those holes over to the other one using that piece itself again, same as we drew out the initial things, and I just used the marking knife to uh, make a nice crisp line on the second one, and did the same thing on that one, the chisel and the Forstner bit and all that stuff. And then we got our bottom rails, and this is where we're at. It's coming along pretty good so far. And, uh, but then I really, I, like I said, I got over the whole chiseling thing, and I decided to just um, put some stops, some scrap wood, uh, nice and close, like sort of wedge the, uh, the top piece in, and then I just drilled out the majority of the material on that one and used a pattern bit um, in the router. So it's a lot quicker, it's, it gave me a better result and I should have done them all this way, but <laughs> I just for some reason I just wanted to use a chisel for a little while. Um, I'll, I'll do it this way from now on probably, because then you just got to clean up the corners and square them off which is a lot less chiseling and it gave me a, a much better result in the grand scheme of things. And uh, once we got all of our holes and things are fitting in properly and all that good stuff, I decided, oh yeah, okay, then we're going to transfer that hole onto the second one and repeat the process. So I just used the, uh, the, the piece itself as the thing for the pattern bit to ride against and then I had to remove that piece and do the rest of it because my pattern bit wasn't quite long enough but I can now reference off what had already been routed and we're at this point now so that is what the rack is gonna look like it's pretty cool I'm pretty happy with it at this point um, then I could check I should have probably uh, yeah but the guitar and made sure that the guitar wasn't going to sit in there and it was not quite far enough back the top rail where the neck leans wasn't quite far enough back it was sitting a little bit too upright so i just took a, a hand plane to peel the front off the top rail just back about uh, an eighth of an inch or something just to give myself a little more relief and we get things final sanded on the edges so that the everything was nice and smooth and then I decided to uh, accent it a little bit by making it these sort of crisscrossy lines so that it looked as sort of a relief carve I guess you would call it um, with just a French curve to uh, just carve a little notch in where these pieces quote unquote cross over each other and then I just deepened that with like a crappy uh, lathe chisel from that came with my first lathe just to like expand the wedge it's not a wedge it's like a groove that's what it is just to deepen the groove a little bit and then I could just go around the whole thing with a, a little bit of a round over just like an eighth inch round over or something and uh, clean up the inside corners a little bit before I get to uh, final sanding and finishing stage of this thing. We're just about, uh, we're just about done. I think, I want to say I, I only sanded up to 150 or something on this. Um, it's not going to get a bunch of feeling happening on it. It's a guitar rack, so. Uh, here we're marking out the, uh, the dowel pegs. The dowel pegs? Dowel pegs aren't a thing. The, the spots for the dowels um, that are going to go along the top rail to separate the necks out. I uh, used 3 8 inch dowels for this, I think. Maybe half inch dowels. Not really sure, actually. Um, but uh, we are, I cut them to I want to say about 4.5 inches or so. And then I could uh, get to finishing, I think, is next. Is it? Oh, no. I need a little chamfer on all the edges of the through tenons as another little accent bit just to sort of soften those a little bit and then I went with uh, a rosewood stain that I had in the uh, 
in the finish cabinet on the Douglas fir pieces because I wanted to uh, to show off the nice straight green from picking rifts on material and sort of break the edges on the little dowels and sort of cloud let would like what do you what do you call that when you sort of like soften the end of a thing whatever it's yeah did that to them and then uh, just went with black spray paint on the uh, the dowels and the side pieces and yeah I think it actually turned out pretty good I, I wanted it I was caught between wanting it to stand out and blend in because you don't want the guitar rack to pull the focus from the fact that you've got a bunch of guitars um, but I did want it to look cool and, and you know you want to notice that the guitar rack is cool you just don't want it to pull all the attention away from the guitars so I, I think I found a nice little middle ground on it here I am epoxying it all together get it all clamped up and uh, there we go, just about done. Then uh, I added a coat of, a couple of coats actually, of triple thick Varathane spray stuff. Uh, I'm not unhappy with how that's done. It, it was a little bit of a pain to uh, smooth out between coats, but yeah, I might not buy it again, but it was okay on this project. And then I had this roll of cork stuff that I wanted to line the, uh, the bottom rails with where the guitars sit. So I cut out a couple of strips, about an inch and a half wide by the length of the rails. And I just used uh, some Super 77 spray glue to attach those to the bottom rails. And uh, we're all done. Yeah. Make sure that this stuff is where you want it to be when you put it down, because that spray glue is good. Well, there it is, my new guitar rack. I don't hate it. <laughs> is it perfect? No, it's by no means perfect. But it uh, it's going to hold... Well, it's supposed to hold eight guitars, but I think it's more likely that it'll probably hold five or six. Uh, but five or six in that size space versus five or six all on individual stands in that room I think uh, is going to be a great improvement and it's pretty cool looking so <laughs> that's it for this one thanks for watching if you like what I do here don't forget you can go over to patreon.com slash wooden things and stuff and you can help me keep doing it I'm gonna give you a before and after of the room so that we can see together I haven't brought this in and set it up yet, but we will we will find out together whether or not it's an improvement. <laughs> All right, stay happy, stay happy, just stay happy, stay that thing that I say. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye for now. I'm gonna bring this inside. <laughs>